Hello everybody, welcome back to Cougar Talk. Today, we are having Cougar Talk Weekly. Um, I've taken a little bit of a break the last couple of weeks because I had some stuff to do and, uh, and whatnot. But one of the things is um, we do have a housing contest. Make sure you guys get into that spring theme. First place is 500K, second place 300K, third place 200K. It's a snug pod is going to be going until june 30th so you guys have a whole month um i extended this because there's some events that are coming up and such but i wanted to extend it a little bit so july 1st basically june 30th um that is going to be when we are going to stop so whatever is in your snug pod july 1st that is going to be the um the house that we're going to see um also Thank you guys to our Cougar City Boosters, Cougar Space, Score Music 09, X Reading X, and Merc 271. Make sure that if you can help and support our Discord, please do so. Boost it up. Subscribe and like our channel and YouTube. Do everything you can if you're able to. If you enjoyed this um, every single week, then please, um, you know, kind of help us. Um, as far as um, our podcast coming up, we are waiting till the PTS is actually done and we are going to have one coming soon. Um, so we are waiting for that to happen. Uh, we're waiting for Necrom to drop in order to give you guys a little bit of a better understanding of Necrom. So please look out for that. Um, and if you want to become a Kugi, then all you have to do is ask. We have a weekly traders donation base always. We have um, the Kugi Madness is going to be on hold this summer. The beginner and advanced prog teams are coming in. PvP night, housing, and tails, and much more. But here is what we are here for. So update 39 or 40 wish list. Uh, Rico262 says, given the second half of the year is dedicated to polishing existing content, I thought I'd throw in my two cents regarding content not bug fixes which should be prioritized over anything i write here so that is one thing that they said that you know the bug fixes should be prioritized this is after they fix the stuff um they say free content integration sauce has for some time now made more win in imperial city free to play these bundles should be formally removed from the crown store and simply integrated into the game Furthermore, prison and tower should be moved to non-DLC dungeons and all achievements, collections, stories, and tab and pledge givers. Update the plain melt story to include the IC story in the correct order. This would introduce the player into how PvP works and teach them the value of sneak. But obviously not all players like PvP, so have a mechanic that would, if the player died on the quest wells in PvP mode that they get ported to a unique one-time instance without other players. Not the whole IC map, just the specific area without other players to complete and move the story along. IC is a good story and probably doesn't have a hold of players playing it. This is actually a pretty cool thing. I do like this. Um, I would have it to where if you're doing that storyline though, um, you can, there's like a little screen that pops up or whatnot that says, hey, would you like to turn on PvP mode or would you like to stay in PvE mode? Um, if you say turn on PvP mode, then, you know, it is what it is. If you do PvE mode, then um, it could be like an invisible character doing stuff. Um, now... I mean, you could do the one-time instance, but I don't know how that coding is going to be. If it's just better to like just vanish the character altogether, or have it to where they're immune to anything um, from other players. I don't know. I'll do like the instance. Um, so that might not be a bad idea. Um, then they say I have the collector edition of both. I think it would be nice gesture sauce upgrade anybody that bought them to collectors and anybody with the collectors with some crates that are icy and moral theme, then pull them both from the store. 
I am personally am unfazed by crates, but it's a double-edged sword of free content. It makes those that did not pay happy, and some that did pay have buyer's remorse. I got my money's well worth before it went free, though. I can envision somebody that bought these the day before they went free feeling buyer's remorse. Edit. Some have stated that they would never go near PvP at all, even if they were thrown into a PvE instance after failing. So an option for an entirely PvE area with specific limitations, i.e. no monster home loot or Telvar access, to set a point with Moloch Ball, dailies, or Shard Collection, but entirely for PvE to complete the quest. Once the quest line is complete, the PvE instance cannot be returned to. Any loot drops, if any, are the sets found in Cold Harbor. That's a fair point, actually. Um, I could see that. And Game Star. Have the Game Star in the Cold Harbor prison. Again, I know, I know, hear me out. But when the player breaks out, that is, when they spawn in the new starting zone and get to choose their adventure, that way it keeps ES tradition of starting shackles. The player gets a taste of Cold Harbor. It already has a better tutorial aspect, and it gets to utilize the starting aspect of any zone. After the player chooses their starting adventure, it also means the player doesn't have to do a silly quest. Like, come to my secluded home and get stabbed to start the play map. <laughs> oh, man. That's that's what's going on now? Um, I just skipped through all that stuff, so... That's, that's pretty funny. Um... <laughs> Give no new zone has the Monday stone. Have the start have the player start with a Monday stone, either a creation or talking to the NPC that shows you how to start a chapter. Yeah, I like the I actually like the Monday stone idea. Um, you know, start with a Monday stone. You get to pick in uh, character creation. I mean, it's not like you can't change it. So, um, can also remove all Monday stones from base game zones except PvP. After that, have Monday stones relocated to Craglorn that are initially broken. Until the no 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 nobody now no um the whole point of Monday stones is to have them um be able to be very accessible but still have to go find them um I mean I know you can put the quest on and restore them yeah it's fitting and all but now one thing they could do is they could create an area in Craglorn where you have all the Monday stones and you don't those stones are broken until the quest line is done um and then you can have it to where it unlocks that area but you still have all the Monday stones from the other places um so base game what i like about the new zones is the main questing is properly structured the base game suffers from hubs having quests with no regards for the player progress you can accidentally skip a quest. This means the quests directly related to the main quest are locked to players unless done in the right order. But it really is how it should have been. Um, Monday's removal as stated, but also the crafting sets are in triplicate. I stay over the time before one time real. If you remove the triplicates, each someone... No, no, just leave it out the way it is. No, no. I see what you're going for, but no. I think it should be that's fine all right so he goes to housing every time sauce releases a unique piece of furniture to the game that isn't in my collection tab but rather it is in my inventory is destined to be more clutter in my clutter house a small child in mark Meyer eyes remember <laughs> okay standard housing crafting stations should become collectibles and attunement stations should become attunement stones when a player using an attunement stone on an overland crafting set it consumes the stone, but your station at home that is collectible like the can now craft that set. Uh um so what's the point of having an attune like no? I get it. All existing attunement stations should get nuked from orbit. No, but people paid money for those. Like um I think you can de I think there should be a way we can decon furniture and antiquities too. I agree with that. Um, and have it to where when you're deconning, you know, something, it has a chance to give you um, you know, some of the items back. Um and antiquities decon it, like that should be a thing. 
Antiquities and treasure maps. 15 codex for a mythic. Why? You only need to find it once and getting 25 trans means it's tenfold easier than grinding leads down every for, for every character. I used to be excited when I got a lead or a treasure map and now they're merely spam. When I get a lead, I have to check if I found it. Now there's so much spam, I don't both with it unless I pre-researched it and I'm actively looking for it. When I get a treasure map, it is often auto-destroyed because in many zones they're useless. What I would like to see is antiquities and treasure maps having more of a finality, but a repeat repeatable antiquities daily for those that, in that enjoy it, and to be used to level alts, and also give out furniture maps. For instance, treasure maps should always give an item you don't already have, therefore it is always of value. When you have collected all items from that region, and have scried all leads for that zone, treasure maps simply do not drop anymore for that zone because there is no treasure left until a new update brings more goodies this means antiquity should rely more on collection than anything else in these i mean i get what you're saying but people like doing treasure maps like donut raptor in our guild he loves doing treasure maps like that's his thing there's people that really look that if they do this and they're like well what am i gonna do like you removed a whole thing from the game so I mean, he says, um, this wouldn't even have to limit players that enjoy scrying or want to fill a house with the same. If the Antiquity Guild had a daily quest giver or two that gave a large bundle of furniture maps, then people can keep scrying in a meaningful way and use it to level alts. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but there's people that like to do this stuff. So like you're just hindering their abilities. So I say no to that. Mage's Guild lost lore books. Sigic is enough of a grind and it's fine. It gets you shards and Mage's book along the way. But when the game relies on too much tedium to justify player progression, it starts to wane. Um, some players love the fact that achievements are account wide and some do not. I prefer it. So to keep both camps happy, if the Mage's Guild books were an account wide collectible, again, hear me out, that when a character has collected them all and returned to Ivia, then the Mage's Guild there is restored and is now a bookshop you can interact with for the alts of an account with a fully collect that that's okay um okay i see this is actually interesting so for the alts of the account you can when they finish shallow merely says he will send an apprentice to fetch them you already did this bookshelf allows the player to sync their achievements lore books motifs recipes companion status that interacts with it and confirms they want to it will sync whatever they wish or do not wish to sync save for things such as account wide collections and crown purchases that are clearly already synced and not going anywhere mages guild xp replaced with a better repeatable not daily public dungeon quest and instructs the player to complete a public dungeon and also kill this is not a daily you can pick up another straight away it is tied to each public dungeon you do not need to wait 24 hours in the same grinding um xp doesn't have to wait 24 hours in killing daedra cash in your mages guild quest and grab another one it will repeat until the player has no more okay so he's they're asking for repeatable mages guild quests this is actually pretty awesome i do like this um and i do like the bookshelf idea um i still think you have to go through the quest line to get the bookshelf with each character or pay the you know the the whatever it is in crowns um that way it doesn't go too crazy with what's you know for the people that have already done this um so and um here's another thing um every with every chapter that comes out you know every lore book and such um I don't know how that's gonna happen with the main quest, like with that bookshelf. Like, is Shalador gonna send, you know, people to retrieve that? Um, it would make sense if you, once you collected the lore books for that whole, um, like, you know, zone, then Shalador, you could have it to where you go visit Ivia again and say, hey, Shalador, like, I've come back with more lore books. Um, go fetch, you know, go fetch them. So, um,
Uh, given the Mage's Guild is known for having an ear to the ground and being aware of what's going on in Tamriel, I think another source of Mage XP should be a quest giver at the Mage's Guild that sends you to go find an NPC that will give you a prologue quest. That way it doesn't have sauces have to litter every capital with new NPCs and have Stuga chase you down the street. <laughs> That's true. Holy shit. This way, Mage's Guild XP farm actually gets player Mage's XP and skill points and it's actually a worthwhile thing to do. Updated some other things to add and I was reminded of another surveys by bloody stigmata um, Okay surveys um, Bloody stigmata reminded me of another system. I used to advocate for I still do but I was thinking since the companion system There is something that we can be leveraged here I used to say there should be a single node that you can interact with and all the surveys get completed But now with the companion system, I like to see them get utilized here when not in use when talking to a companion and the player has a survey in their inventory, a new dialogue appears saying, I have a job for you, where a trade window will open and a player can deposit a certain amount of surveys into them. When accepted, the companion is no longer available for a determined time, an ideal thing to do at the end of the gaming session. The companion also has a particular hobby they enjoy unique to them and a favorite zone. For instance, Mary's hobby is plants and likes the EP zones. Then sending her to an EP zone to complete five blacksmith surveys will increase her chance of returning with alchemy mats too. If Bastion's hobby is fishing and likes the DZ zones, then sending him to DC will increase his chance of returning with fish and a small chance of row. Higher if more fishing achievements are present. This is cool. I actually like this. This is this is cool. Ember, however, if you send her to a zone she is not fond of, may feel the need to pick some pockets along the way returning with some gold as she has already fenced the items we have been using hirelings this entire time that we have never paid mind you but the companion system could overrule the hirelings and give some additional benefits based on the personalities and traits replace with um i mean no i do like the hirelings in the mail but i do like this particular thing where i have a job for you you go do and you have like limited it's very limited you can only do like five surveys per day or something like that um also it gives people a chance to do all the companions um if they haven't and i think this would be best if you have completely maxed out that companion that means that you have their favor without them being out um that's when you should be able to go i have a job for you um i do like this idea a lot um you know specific zones um you know plants then sending her to you know and she can return with like one or two alchemy mats um you know row maybe it's like it has to be a very very small chance of row if they're talking about perfect row um and then higher more fishing achievements is present on the account that's actually pretty awesome like you use the achievements that you're i mean it, it creates a chance for people to actually go after master angler say hey if i can you know send bastion to dc and you know he has a chance of row but I, it's higher you know you why not so and I do like the ember thing, you know, if you happen to send her somewhere she's not fond of, you know, pick some pockets. Um, after the timer is complete and the, ret the companion returns all mats, acquired should be sent to the player's craft bag regardless of subscription. Non-ESO members still have to refine it, which will end up in their inventory. The reason for the craft bag is simple. When a companion returns, the player is notified with a sound and message in the top corner. And the craft bag hall is presented in the bottom corner as it fills up. The player may be mid-dungeon or busy or not even logged in, and to dump in their inventory would be a major inconvenience. Also, given the significance of a haul, a player with a full email list may lose some major loot. If it was just a quick dump into the craft bag, it is clean and no messing around with clunky systems. Now members will still have to refine many of the mats, pulling them out of the bag. Yeah, that's true. Why not? Put them in the bag. Um, after hitting level 20 and full report, an option to specialize the companion and give it a mind of its own. Just because I give Bastion a bow doesn't mean he wants to use it. He may negatively be a tank. If I specialize Bastion, he now gathers his own loot and will over time upgrade himself based on a reasonable drop rate. 
The cost is, however, that he can no longer be equipped with the weapons I want him to use. The merp for for gear he has prior to specific. I mean, I get it. Um, it could work. I think this is years in the progress, though. I don't think this is, you know, how more gear and may complete Black Rose Prison. And if you complete with the quest active, you'll be there to loot and get a unique sword and board perfected that is unlocked in your collectibles or to give him a mythic item or to craft him a set or give him the mats to do so would give i mean i understand but that's a lot of coding so um so you're basically giving him you know yeah i, I get it but i think this is a lot Remove assistance of companions. I'm not saying take away everyone's assistant overnight. Just stop releasing them. And it says convert a banker into banker functionality. If you have purchased banker functionality, then your companion will not be able to be your banker merchant. Ooh, that's, that's actually pretty cool. But the problem is you cannot have companions out um, for, like, if you're in a full group. So, one thing, this actually is cool just have a npc that has the functionality of all the assistants so that could be a thing um that is the thing thieves guilds and undaunted i'm not saying they should but given periodically older dlc has gone free to play if they were to do another then consenting with trial finder it should be thieves guild Upon completing the Thieves Guild, instead of getting a smuggler assistant, the account unlocks smug smuggler functionality. As far as I'm concerned, Ember is everything the smuggler should be, yet cannot smuggle. Your new C-3PO companion in the base game also has no morals and will smuggle for you too. Essentially, completing both of those will give your companion the smuggles and could also merch and bank and squire for you. If the Thieves Guild ever does go free to play roll ledgerman and thieves guilds into one single tree where lock picking will level your thieves guild this is where i may get tickle the people the wrong way remove the undaunted guild um there's just so many cool things in the undaunted that are very support heavy um yeah I mean, I do like what they're talking about. And place men wounds in the Sigic. It might be putting a common heal skill behind a paywall, but the Sigic, yeah, should probably, if I'm being honest, if the other thing, the Undaunted is all over the place. Are they vampires, spider worshippers? I mean, they're kind of everything. Um, The soul magic tree, if these go free, the soul magic tree is a very niche. It contains one ultimate skill. Scrap the existing soul magic tree and merge rework the soul uh yeah dungeon love rework these dungeons to have one of each trying to encompass the complete story the system was introduced long ago with one being normal and two being vet it is very repetitive if they were merchant to one then some monster maps would get removed and there would be a skill point issue if it would require some creativity above to the rain having a spell scar converted into a dungeon would allow for more monster sets to be ran and allowed okay should be converting to beginner's trial and drop a perfection. Okay, okay. Should not be amazing tier, but to exist should show no newer player setups. Okay, okay. So they're talking about reworking the base dungeons to standard DLC dungeons, and where the story, you know, and, and okay, okay. So and the ultimate loose, they're enjoyed. Okay. So they're talking about putting merging dungeons together and having it to where it gives you perfected versions of stuff. That's actually not bad. I would I would do that. All dungeons should have their story told on rails with no direct interaction. The other thing can be utilized by having new standard DLC dungeons or NPC quest givers. Off tank normal trials and companions. I do not advocate for this in veteran content, but a simple math check on this makes me wonder how random trial finder would work when a trial may require two tanks. 
Will all trials seek out two tanks? Will the game tell you who the main tank is and the off tank is? How will our complete random pug group manage who goes through the gate and who takes the high road in Hell Raw? Solution, have an ex-tank companion that has joined the Fighters Guild be off tank in normal trials. This becomes a test of healer as the companion will do less demanding tasks while require healing. The companion also could give you a speech to notify the separate groups of their roles and also provide a brief tutorial on what is ahead. Oh, okay. So the companion says storm the gate, then the quest marker will appear at the gate and you will have an invisible wall blocking you from going up in the companion. The companion will randomly select a healer and five DPS. This is actually pretty cool. Yes, that is cool. They, sh they should do that in hell raw actually. Um, the companion will um, adequately, with enough heals, do his job upstairs, but suffer an injury and no proceed with you to the final boss. On vet, you you get no help from the companion. This does not apply to vet trials, it's, and there should be no random veteran. This way, all random normals can easily run the formula of one tank, two heals, 90 PS, and if it lands on a trial where an off tank is summoned... The actual guild does its job and sends assistance. This is actually pretty awesome. I do like this. Um, I do agree it should be normal trials. So this is, yeah. If the Thieves Guild played more a prominent role in the skills, I could see a rush to grab the chest in Dungeon. So have it so that if you unlock the chest, you get 100% of the XP. But if you see a group member do it, you get 50%. But like Daedra hunting in a group of okay um you know these are all great ideas um there's some that are better than others and there's some that i'm like nah dude but overall great ideas i do like this um the next one is veteran difficulty concept setting your character's gameplay difficulty now affects overworld normal um Difficulty drops is nerfed heavily except for farming notes and overland set drops little to no gold or other valuable items from uh, Enemies killed and you gain less XP vet difficulty sets all overland content to craglorn difficulty and Overland drops from enemies are always purple you get the normal amount of gold drops from enemies in vet difficulty and much more than the normal XP Okay Okay I mean, this, I, I, I agree. I agree. They should really do something about this. 12 event tickets and accident. Is there a way to correct accidentally turning in a quest that has event tickets attached when you have 12? Yes. Oh my God, this is a thing. Um, they they really need to do something. No way to undo it. If it's a quest hand in you, um, there's usually a warning with red text that you are going to be wasting tickets. If you're on PC, there's an add-on specifically to avoid this. What was an idea behind setting only 12 tickets when you can have so much more valuing currencies? Um, by limiting to 12, it forces players to spend them or lose them, so players are unable to save more than 12 events. To um, Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get it. I really do think it should be 12 tickets, uh, maybe even 15 at most, if they decide to, like, bump it up a little bit. Um, But I do like the whole, like there needs to be it won't let you turn in the quest or something if you have 12 tickets like it should be something like that make sword birds less distracting yes make them half the size and make them not flap flap the wings i mean at this point i almost feel like it would be ruining a core traditional piece it's true i do like i mean they they are really distracting I do like the make them half the size though. Um, they can still flap their wings, but make them half size is fine. Like the little scamp is little too. So, my first month experience in ESL as a new player almost ruined. Ixildor says, Hi all, I wanted to share some of my thoughts given that some people um, before service go back up. This post is just my opinion and don't have the same for all new players. If the mods think this post should be in another location, please do so. Firstly, I have played many, many games and MMOs over the years, but thanks to friends, I decided to give it a go. I really enjoyed my first month. The game is full of content, storylines that is amazing, how much time can be put into the game. But after getting the ESO Plus sub and getting the new experience in DLCs, uh, got final to the level 50 and low CP levels, 
and decided to queue up for dungeons as the rewards seemed legit as well as getting those undaunted pledges done. Little I knew after the first few days, I noticed a de decent amount of players quitting the party halfway through or just before the last boss and didn't know why that would be and always was either the tank or the healer. After waiting for sometimes 40 plus minutes in the queue and then not even finishing the dungeons, I could not get my pledges or random dailies done. As I have little over an hour a game of gaming a day, this completely threw me off of the game and just continued to focus on questing and doing solo content around the map. So I have a question for you out there. How many of you have had this issue where you have limited time to enjoy the game and try to do daily group content but the rewards and experience are ruins for the actions of some. One of the affected players even mentioned that this is commonly done by highly CP gear players that want to rush the dungeon and then quit if not done fast enough because they only get 15 minute cooldown to wait for another. Do you think the game devs should punish this behavior of those players and make it at least a full day cooldown for dungeons with all their characters? Why not? Why get into group content if you're not willing to play as a team? Why not go in solo if they are so confident? Um. At the moment, no one is having an issue where veteran players rush through only for the rewards, meaning the MMO part of the game needs quite some work from Sauce. But I do not know if they ever will do this. As far as I know, Sauce has never really addressed the issues players experience in normal dungeons. But don't let that stop you from playing or having fun. Try to find a guild. Yeah, that's what I would suggest. Like, try to find a guild. Um, there's plenty of guilds out there that are for, you know, just playing. Um there's people in each guild that will play with you um you just have to ask um i've had people say like you know looking for such and such for for this looking for such and such for this and i jump in you know so there's others that are out there pause timers while at home oftentimes i feel like working on my house or crafting there but feel pressure to leave simply because i have an experience buff for meal buff slowly ticking can buffs be paused i do like the um the buffs being paused the experience buff i agree the meal buff not so much i can't be the only one who has gazelles of food not just daily reward chicken um i really do think the um the xp should be paused but yeah i do agree all the other buffs get them you know but xp buffs absolutely um i do like the whole idea of pausing them if you are at a home how do low price items sell in just a few seconds? I was quickly putting a lot of items up for sale at our guild trader and wasn't paying attention. I missed the last zero on two stacks of crafting mats. I realized a few seconds later, but before I could remove them, they were sold. It was almost immediately. How is this possible? Um, I mean, somebody was there. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's all I can say. Somebody was looking at your stuff at the right time. It pay attention <laughs> that's all i can say pay attention um what if what if we could give the beggars coin and it would be nice since they're always asking for money and we can't respond with generosity then have them walk away to spend it on something tie a buff to it to give more the better and the longer the buff needed gold sink yeah why not why not let's give some beggars some some stuff um the misery of antiquities leads my challenge over the last year has been to complete the antiquities codex I started with 1,500 to find and I have 77 left to go. And the majority of these, I can't see I will achieve any time in the future, if ever. With that in mind, here's my list of the words of the bunch in Xbox EU. Lost count number of runs. Do, I've done a moot like Kosa, but I do know I've opened in excess of 500 containers. Good Jesus. Death Dealer's Feet. Dragon Star Arena final reward. So many runs, so much time, so little fun, and still no lead. I hear you, darling. I hear you. Dude, that thing was a pain in the ass. So, Chain of the Vampire. Hair storms. Great when it's an event. Absolutely useless when it's not. Oh my god, I know. I just wish there was a better reward that would give people, you know, like just jumping up to, to do it. Or have it to where the hair storms would um the difficulty is set to you know how many players are hitting it we've talked about this in the past um meteorotic beads mages guild 
lead. Only available once per day per team with an average of 70 to get to the lead. Good lord. Rune Scribe Brazers and Boss of Chipwright regrets 25 runs, no lead. Jeez. This person is really bad at RNG. Twitching Eyeball, Grave Light, Sentry Bosses, and Prius. 45 runs? What? Jesus. End boss of layer of mass, 25 runs, no leads, and it's a long dungeon. Oh my god, I, dude, I understand. That thing is just insane. Anyone who wants to run, meaning it's really only possible once a month when it appears in the DLC. Uh, wandering bosses in the Deadlands, 17 killed, no lead. 33 treasure maps in Blackwood, the Deadlands, High Isle, Galen, and the Reach, 100 bought found and not a single lead to be had as mentioned by many these are by far the worst leads given they're hidden behind multiple layers firstly i would like to say a massive thank you to sauce for the improvement made to drop rates for some leads in update 37 my list would have been a quite a bit longer if not for those changes secondly sauce is there any hope that any of the above might make it onto a similar list of improvements in the near future i see there is no update uh nothing for update 37 but other than keep my hopes lastly i know there are people out there that have completed this challenge and i'm sorely in need of a pep talk to keep going how did you get through it did you experience similar problems have these leads dropped in the past two months for anyone or could they be bugged darling keep on trucking like i feel your pain i know with some of these leads like it takes um, you've definitely ran some of these way more than I have, uh, but I definitely feel your pain. If you have your heart set on something, then, you know, do it. The satisfaction at the end of completing this is going to be epic. And, you know, I hope you're documenting it, um, in some sort of way that you can show off on YouTube or something, because that is, you know, the fruit of the rewards at the end so um you know all power to you keep it going and then the last um thing we're gonna talk to because i mean this is a long one future quarterly of life features like to see and guess who is on here i did not see this this is katana from our guild I'm on console, so maybe this option exists for PC. I don't really know. PC has many features. We do not, plus add-ons if it doesn't. When I grab the daily crafting rids and head my tune over to the stables to get the writing lessons, the details of the crafting rids scroll from top to the bottom of the screen so I can't see where I'm writing. My tunes are in Riften and the stables are a ways off. The scrolling lasts the whole time to the stables and back, even with the crafting building as well. I loved an option in the UI to turn that off. I get the details in the upper right hand corner anyway. This is redundant and highly irritating. Um, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it is kind of irritating. Um, I don't know why you're in Riften though. That's kind of like a weird place to do Ritz. Um, it's a really good place for RPing though, role playing. But, um, I mean, Vivek is actually a lot better uh, as far as like the Ritz and such. Um, even uh, Malaval Tor. If you have to do the quest, um, there's this place in Malaval Tor. There's like this little town and you have to do the quest though. But that place is a lot better. Like everything is super, super close. It's actually closer. Like everything's closer than Vivek. Like in Malaval Tor, the, the dude is like just a little bit away from where the Rit board is. Um, and then, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, the Rivor is like super close to where you drop off your Ritz. And then, uh, the only thing is like, if you craft the alchemy and such, um, you have to go inside a building to do it, but all the other crafting stations, like the woodworking, blacksmithing and clothing are like right there in the middle. Um, I can just holler at me and I can show you where it is. Um, you probably would be okay with that. But, um, yeah, thank you guys for everything. Also, the, um, <clears throat> the Matt Raffle is basically, um, 
is is almost done. So the the mat raffle is almost done. It ends May twelfth. So tomorrow, um, this is going to go um to go in. You you have the whole day of May twelfth to put in stuff, but as soon as it hits midnight on you know May twelfth, so May thirteenth, we are done with it. I will be putting like a cutoff um thing in our guild bank, so I know what um <clears throat> what it is. I'll be taking the message off. The message of the day will be just taking it off. And we will announce the winner in Discord Live. Um, so we will announce that winner in Discord Live. So there we go. I got to figure out a way to do it, but we're going to do it. <clears throat> um, remember the winners... Well, winner is only one winner. They're gonna get one thing. So just be ready. The big, big, big thing that we have added and it's the last addition to this. Unless you guys want to like go crazy and nuts this last day and me add something else. But uh, I highly doubt that's gonna happen. But the Necrom ship housing that is coming up in the next chapter is being added to the price list so one lucky person in our guild that has donated stuff to our raffle and taken their ticket amounts will be getting the whole shebang so be ready folks is coming up soon anyways thank you guys for watching um if you want to get to our guild, you all you have to do is ask. So thanks, folks. Have a great day.